Number 32. During an ice show, a 60 kilogram skater leaps into the air and is caught by an initially stationary 75 kilogram skater. Letter A. What is their final velocity assuming negligible friction and that the 60 kilogram skater's original horizontal velocity is 4 meters per second? All right. So first thing is, right, we have a collision happening and we have to understand what the nature of that collision is, meaning is it inelastic or elastic? It doesn't tell us explicitly, but if one skater is catching another, we can assume that it is an inelastic collision, okay? Because both entities join as one after the collision. So that being stated, so now for letter A, I can use this formula, right? The uh, inelastic collision formula, right? Conservation of momentum here. So this is basically M1 V1 before the collision plus M2 V2 before the collision because the two objects, object one and object two, by the way, which I'll call here is object one and this one's object two. The two objects before the collision are separated, okay? And then after the collision, they are joined. So therefore, what would their mass be if after the collision they are joined as one unit? Well, their mass would be the addition of both of them, right? And I'm gonna put that in parentheses because this would essentially be their mass after the collision. And then since they're a single unit, they're only gonna have one velocity. So now what I wanna do is I wanna look and see, do I know all the variables? I know the mass of the first object. I know the initial velocity of that first object. I know the mass of the second object, and I know the velocity of that second object before the collision. I know the masses, and I gotta calculate the velocity after. So whoop de do. I can do it, right? Because I have one equation with one unknown. So the initial mass of the, uh, not the initial mass, but the mass of the first object was 60. Actually, you know what? Um, let me just solve this for VA first, okay? Meaning the velocity after. We would just divide out the summation of the masses here, right, from both sides, M1 plus M2. So now finally we get, I'm just thinking ahead here. Remember that the velocity of the second object Okay, before the collision was zero. So what happens to this whole term, ladies and gentlemen? It cancels. Okay, so I'm not gonna write it basically plus zero. I'm not gonna write that there. I'm just gonna leave it out. Just to simplify it along the way, M2. So that should now be equal to VA. So here's our equation to solve this problem. Sorry. Okay, one more time. For some reason it thinks I'm drawing a triangle. So now all I gotta do is plug it in. So the mass of the first object is 60 kilograms. The velocity of that first object, I'm talking about it moving to the right, and therefore it's a positive four, okay, meters per second, divided by then the mass of that first object, which was 60 kilograms, right, plus then the mass of the second object, which was 75 uh, kilograms. And that's equal to the velocity after the collision. So let's do the math. So basically it's 60 times four, divided by 60 plus 75. And we get a value of about 1.78, right? Considering rounding, 1.78, and that is now meters per second. Okay, meters per second. And that is the velocity of the system after the collision. Okay, so that takes care of letter A. Moving on to letter B. How much kinetic energy is lost? So again, this is very similar to the question we did uh, just in 31, right? Uh, the simple formula here would simply be something like this, right, the kinetic energy lost will equal the initial kinetic energy, initial kinetic energy minus the final kinetic energy. So expanding on that, the kinetic energy right, lost will be now one half mv initial squared, right, minus one half mv final squared. So uh, what we, what we, have to remember is that the this is really the mass of just the first object, okay, the uh, kinetic energy of the uh, initially, okay, and then the final kinetic energy, the mass is the first object plus the second object, right? So this mass here is different from this mass. So the only thing I can really pull out is a common half term, okay? So kinetic energy lost would be equal to one half m vi squared, and I'll say m1, right, minus uh, m1 plus 2, 
vf squared. Okay, that, that sounds like a good formula now. So the kinetic energy lost will be equal to one half multiplied by the mass of the first object, which was just 60 kilograms. 60 kilograms multiplied by then its velocity, which was just four. I'm gonna leave out some of the decimals to save a little space. Then that's gonna be down minus the mass of the first object plus the second object. Remember it was 60 kilograms plus the 75. That was their combined mass, right? And we can simply do that math right now, right? Plug it into the calculator. It should come out to be uh, 135. Okay, so we got 135. 135, then multiplied by the final velocity. And we found that final velocity, which was positive. So it's now going to be point, excuse me, 1.78, and that's squared. Okay, and let's see what this comes out to be. So the kinetic energy lost will simply be, so we'll do what's in the parentheses first. So 60 times four squared minus 135 times 1.78 squared. Okay, and then multiply that all by 0.5. So here we have a value that the kinetic energy lost will be 266, 266 uh, joules. All right, and that takes care of letter B. Guys, thanks so much for tuning in. Please remember to hit that subscribe button. If this video helped you out at all, that'd be a little way to help us out. We'd so appreciate it. And uh, I look forward to helping you with the next question. Have a great day.